Super Cup Abba Kiari accuses the indigenous people of Biafra IPUB as a cause of his battles. And the Oshun state governorship elections as it draws near, her near infighting rocks the APC as both factions get ready to battle. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Ann. Police Chief Abba Kiari continues to face tribulations as he is arrested by the police force barely hours to the announcement that he is wanted by the police. While facing a probe panel led by Joseph Igbonike, a Deputy Inspector General of Police, Kiari claimed that members of the Indigenous People of Biafra, IPOB, and the Eastern Security Network, ESN, are behind his travails. The same panel has recommended, that the demo has recommended the demotion of Abba Kiari to the rank of Assistant Commissioner of Police, as it had been found uh, that he was culpable of fraternizing with fraudulent characters, thereby violating the Nigeria Police Force professional ethics. Now, joining us to discuss and break this down is Adeshina Ogunlana. He's a legal practitioner, and we're also being joined by Dennis Amakri. He's a former assistant director uh, of the Department of State Services, DSS. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, gentlemen. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Amakri, for joining us. Thank you. Great. Um, I'm going to start with you because you um, are a security person. Many have uh, accused the NDLEA. In fact, when the story came out, many people started saying, we saw it on social media, I listened to radio programs. Uh, a lot of people said that this was a diversionary tactic as to the fact that the FBI is still asking for an extradition of Abba Kiari to the U.S. so that he could face uh, charges of money laundering and others. Um, do you believe that this is a tactic? I mean, with all that has developed, so all the stories that have been breaking since um, the NDLEA came out with this allegation, uh, do you find any form of hanky-panky uh, happening underneath? Uh, well, thank you for having me. Um, I don't believe that the NDLA invitation is anything to do with any hanky pack. But I don't trust the police management of what they are doing with that case. Because uh, let's start from uh, uh, the uh, fraud, fraud case with Hush Puppy. You know, they should have finished that and submitted their report. But that report is still hanging in there. No decision has been taken. And it is only when the NDLA uh, came out openly, because they have requested for Abakari before the uh, press conference. Then they refused. And then when they came out to the press conference, of course, they were forced, when it's in the public domain, to, to release him uh, to, to the NDLA. So I, I think uh, the police authorities might be trying to cover their own I don't blame them too much because uh, usually uh, it will affect the image of the police uh, when one of their best uh, is being um, uh, disgraced, so to say, in this kind of situation. Mm. You, you led yourself straight into my next question because I was going to ask that a super cop like Abba Kiari and the, the position that he ac actually occupied as, uh, up until yesterday when, or early this morning when he was demoted, um, do you not think that the list, uh, if he does begin to sing like a canary, that there might be other people implicated even high up on the echelon of the police force? Oh, definitely. You know that even when the uh, Hush Puppy case came up, we never knew that there were other people involved, although they said that the money was sent to his brother, uh, but they were not named. Uh, but uh, when the uh, NDLA case came out, we know that there were four active members of his team that were involved. And I can tell you one thing, if they take him out, even from the NDLA interrogation to the FBI interrogation, he's going to mention more people. So I think that might be what many people want to avoid by trying to shield him from this uh, national disgrace. Hmm. Uh, let me come to you, um, 
Mr. Shina, um, we've seen the development of the story, like I was just saying. Um, we've seen a war of wars also between the police and the NDLEA. And just like um, Mr. Macri has said, it, it took that press conference for, you know, this story to break open as much as it has now. Um, but then well, let's talk about jurisdiction here, because the NDLEA is calling for, you know, the police to allow for him to be arrested. But the police has arrested Abba Kiari. So where is where do we draw the line of jurisdiction here if he's being uh, um there are allegations of him um getting involved in drug related uh, cases should it be the police arresting him or should he should he be the ndla uh, help us to understand <laughs> well <coughs> maybe you should have asked the gentleman from the intelligence um, background uh because he's a law enforcement agent I'm just a lawyer and a private citizen. But you see, ordinarily, anyone actually can arrest anybody. NDL has the power to arrest. They are specialized in that particular area of crime. Mm -hmm. um, GFCC is specialized in the particular area and all the immigration specialized customs mm -hmm. uh, and even the police generally. That's the octopus body. Yeah, but should the police be, uh, you know, a judge in its own case, being that it is the police officer that's been alleged to be involved in this NDLA issue, which is which well, what, 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 I is think a jurisdiction for ex the ex drug law no, ex ex except, except I'm behind the news. I thought it's behind it over to the NDLA. Well, they're still waiting for, I mean, from what we hear, the police um, has um, arrested him um, for this case. Has been handed over. Has been, he has been handed over okay, yes. as we speak. Yes, now. It's, not, it's not that he has been handed uh, over. Uh, just like, like I was saying, if a private person can arrest a person, commit a crime or about to escape justice and hand over to the police. Now, the police, they, they arrested him and handed him over to the uh, NDLA, the more appropriate authority, because they are the one in charge of narcotics and all that. Yes. So, so uh, that, that one, I think we've left that, the issue mm -hmm. of uh, jurisdiction. And as it is now, the important thing is to move forward mm -hmm. about the conclusion of furthering or deepening of the investigation. Yeah. So, as we speak, the the, ND, uh, the police is also saying that there are NDLEA officers that they think were also part of this criminal act. They're yes. asking that those NDLEA officers be also prosecuted. But the NDLEA is saying that that is not the case. So again, we're in a war of wards. Uh, well, as, as it is really, you know, Nigeria is just a very interesting country. As the gentleman over there, Mr. Mercury, has, um, has uh, mentioned, there are socio-psychological reasons for the police wanting to protect their own. Uh, generally, in all these uh, military police situation, security, they call, that's what they call, uh, esprit de corps, uh, where you want to shield and it's not only among themselves. Doctors do shield themselves. Lecturers do shield themselves. It's a normal human thing, not necessarily good or bad. Mm -hmm. So as, as, it, as it were, uh, if the police are saying the right thing, it's, it's, it's important that, okay, don't say our boy is the only one that is bad. Our mm -hmm. boy, if he's bad, is, he has a network of people that is not only in the police, but even your own organi organization. So uh, I think it is not too right to knock the police and but, but to ask whether what the accusation or the allegation, whether indeed it is, it is a meri, meri, meritorious. Mm -hmm. So uh, I won't want to begin to speculate on that. They should furnish facts to back up uh, their claim. Uh, and, 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 and like somebody was saying in the Bible, uh, Paul, he said, well, for whatever reason some people are preaching Christ, maybe even out of malice, but the important thing is that the Christ is preached. So well, whether the police is acting maliciously or acting patriotically, the important thing is that if indeed it is true that uh, they are um, connect of um, Abakiari in the NDLA, they should be exposed. Mm. And, and I think that's fair enough. Let's talk about the judicial, uh, the judicial process now, because yes. now we have a case. We've seen evidences. We've seen a video that was released. It was trending. Um, one of the major problems that we have in the country is the slow wheel of justice. Um, we've seen even the likes of Evans, the very notorious kidnapper, trying to also crawl out of the doldrums to say, well, he was implicated, he was not necessarily a kidnapper. 
Uh, and that's because, again, justice has stalled uh, for this long. How are we certain that we will see the end of this matter anytime soon? Because Nigerians are also expressing that kind of, uh, you know, worry that maybe um, this process might just be swept under the carpet. Again, being who he is, being that he is a, a very highly placed police officer. Yes, it's, it's, um, it's a national issue. It's a national issue, and the fact is that in this country, it's a country of, uh, of uh, it's a jungle. I you like to say the word jungle. In, in the jungle, law is not right. What is right is might, you know? And, um, and so you're not just only even talking about the offenders. Mm. What about the lawyers? I'm, I'm, I'm talking of people like me, mm -hmm. or that's my profession. Mm -hmm. What about the judges? You understand. Um, many lawyers, uh, if I may say this, uh, are more or less like um, uh, mafia guns. Hang, uh, the, once you can pay their money, you, you are not supposed to do that as a lawyer. You are supposed to put the ethics of the profession first. Mm -hmm. But then, um, you, your, your interest as a lawyer must be to the court, the dignity of the court and the profession. But many of the times, people are swayed by money. These are people they call successful lawyers, you know. These are the big-time lawyers. So they help, you know, they help criminals to shield them away uh, from the due process of law. This is a serious law. allegation against the judiciary. It, I'm, I'm talking of even the bar. I'm here to get to the judge. I'm just, you, you invited me. It's the truth. It's the truth I'm talking from, from experience. I'm more than a quarter of a century in this, in this profession, mm -hmm. you know. In fact, the elite in this country is the problem of this country. And the elite includes the, the uh, high-class professionals like lawyers, engineers, and all those people that do approvals for wrong construct. They are the elite, they are professionals, you understand, including the bar, the bar, the bar, the bar itself. The bar, the bar, the bar is part of the problem. I'm a lawyer, but I know what I'm talking about. Mm. It's the truth if of the election, even the ordinary elections. How you manufacture evidence and do the wrong thing. And just not just any other lawyer, senior lawyers. And we are talking also of the, of the bench itself. You, you understand? Of course, there are very fine judges, even at the lowest level, magistrate and all that. But then there are bad eggs. This is the truth. The corruption that we're talking about is not limited to law enforcement agents and everybody. People have challenges. The next thing they do, they begin to pick calls, um, put calls to, 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 to judges. How many of the judges are properly appointed? If you are, if, 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 if are appointed by what we call um, prebendalists, uh, um, by politicians, by connect, connect. So when they have issues, they now call you and say, this person is our person. Sometimes they are, oh, so, so, so person has interest in this case. And then you find a judge who may not have the spine to stand up to the truth. So that, that issue about concerns, how is this case to, people are already gone beyond skepticism in the country to cynicism. The, oh, oh, this one, now nah, it's not a story. It will die down. Later now, we hear that uh, either they have, to use the Nigerian language, they've dambaru the case, or they die the case, or, 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 or that there is uh, walo ni walo la, that is adjournment today, postponement tomorrow, uh, to wear down everybody. And, 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 and so the concern of the masses of our people are real. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the cynicism is so much that people are even saying that even this um, NDLA to reserve is rather fantastic. Even despite the something played and all that, ah, ah, that man looks fatter than Abaki Ario. Are you sure it's not a clone? Are you sure it's not um, a scheme to escape um, extradition to the US so as to face to show the level? And people who are dismissing this kind of claim so easily and are using logic are missing the point. Nigeria is a strange country. That's very strange things do happen. When Obas Niger was uh, president, people who should know know that they said there was somebody who by himself created in Nassau Rock a fake, a fake, a fake um, bomb disposal unit. In this Lagos, about 50 years ago, there's an entire fake police station. Entire fake police station. So, so, so when you look at all these things, we really need to do a lot of um, soul searching uh, we are within ourselves. And when, when people begin to vilify people like um, uh, Abba Kiari, the truth is that it's only the person 
that uh, is caught. That is the, the that, that is thief. Because before now, he's supposed to be super cop, wonderful cop, the best of the very best. They even gave me not only an award, a standing ovation, only to find out that, at least so far, I, because we are here to hear his own side of the story fully mm. now, I won't want to comment, but it's, okay. it's already dented. Let me come back to you, Mr. Macri. Interesting perspective um, uh, from Mr. Gulana here. But let's talk about the head of the NDLEA because he's also made um, a very interesting um, point about the, the way that Nigerians feel and the fact that we have already resigned to fate because of where we're coming from, antecedents and all of the things that we have been exposed to. But let's look at the person of... Um, Buba Marua, he has been a former military administrator. He's held many offices. Uh, he ran uh, an airline, even though that airline shut down. But do you think that he as a person would let this matter just go the way it goes normally uh, here in the country? Let's take a look at his personality. Uh, okay, thank you very much. You know, um, Buba Marua himself, is uh, when he was military administrator, I worked with him as assistant director of the SS in Lagos, you know, and I know him very well. And when he took over the NDLA, it was very, very clear the NDLA was going down the drain. There were a lot of people that were into all kinds of things, and of course, when he came there, he told them that this is the time to work now. If you don't work, he show you the way out. If you work, he promotes you, and that's what he did. You know, so right now, since he came, there have been many wins for the NDLA, where, you know, they've gone through um, uh, more efficient uh, operations, uh, prosecuting, and then, of course, uh, doing all these things. You can remember that this particular case, when it happened, instead of doing the business with Kerry, they went back to their office to report. And then, of course, it got to him, and he said, go ahead, you know. So that tells you the integrity or image of that man that is heading the NDLA at this time. Mm. So I, I, I think um, I, I don't have any problem with that. Mm. Let me ask a question that everybody else may be asking in their mind. Um, there's a conspiracy theory or a theory that uh, people are putting together saying that uh, Abakiri is the fall guy for something that is pretty bigger than what we actually are seeing. Or there's, let, let me say the, the very famous quote, there's more to it than meets the eye and that he's being a fall guy. But that um, this is just a cover up for something else. We're not, not, now we're not talking about the FBI incidents. We're looking at a bigger drug um, or syndicacy in this country. Uh, let's not forget that, as we speak, Nigeria is dealing with a serious drug issue. We have a drug crisis. Our young people are given to this drug thing. We're seeing a lot of them as young as 15, 13. They're all given to the life of drugs. Um, could this be a way to bring down this drug syndicacy, uh, syndicates in Nigeria? Um, or do you even buy into this narrative in the first instance? I don't believe in conspiracy theories because they are just speculation from people. You know, people can speculate all the world. And of course, you know, in Nigeria, anything you do, um, uh, they will start to read meanings into it. In fact, I was very happy that the sting operation that, you know, nailed uh, Abakari in that video, you know, two people were speaking Hausa. If they were speaking Igbo, and, uh, you know, they will say, oh, no, that's a setup. You know, those, those are Igbo or Yoruba. That's a setup. But those two were speaking a common language to two of them. So, you know, I don't believe in uh, conspiracy theories. Investigations will bring out everything that we need to know. And uh, the earlier they do, they finish up their investigation and take it to the court. Because it's in the court that we really hear. All what we're hearing now are just peripheral. In the court, that's where all the story, the real story, will come out. Mm. Finally, let's look at his claim. And I'm going to ask the same question to Mr. Golona here. Um, Abakiari has told, um, you know, uh, 
he was reportedly claiming that IPOB is responsible, IPOB and the ESN are responsible for his woes. And I'm asking, how, what is the relationship between the ESN and what they're pushing for with what Abba Kiari is going through now, whether it be the hush poppy situation or this drug related um, you know, um, case? What does the ESN have to do with it? I don't think uh, that is a real fact. Is um, I, I think it's uh, gravity at straws when you come to saying things like that. Because uh, what has IPOP got to do with him, or is he one of the people that has been on the back of IPOP and they feel that this is the time to deal with him? Uh, well, it still remains that if he's clean, even if IPOP is trying to get back at him. He will be, he will be out of it free. But if he's not clean, then that's the weakest link in him that they have used to nail him down. But I, I really don't think, uh, you know, I still don't believe in conspiracy theories. <laughs> uh, okay, Mr. Gulana. Now I'm just going to quote exactly what Abba Kiari said. He 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 did say um, that members of the indigenous people of Biafra and the Eastern Security Network are behind his travails. He made this claim when he actually appeared before the uh, probe panel led by the Deputy Inspector General of Police, Joseph Ibuniki, at the force headquarters in Abuja. Um, and, and this report was published by Daily Trust, so it's not a hearsay. Um, and I'm really wondering, because he said that the outlawed IPOB and its armed wing were after him during the onslaught launched uh, against them in the southeast and he's thinking that this is them um, getting back at him <clears throat> well thank you uh first well, I, I can only react as a lawyer that i am even though this story has been published by daily trust which is fairly respected and all that i will still since i didn't hear directly from abakiari i will not want to make much of that but assuming that he says so now, let me try to deal with that hypothetically. Assuming that he says so, well, let's back it up with facts. If you say that you failed your exams because your driver of your mother was the one who has affected you, eh, it's not enough to say it. Tell us whether it was that your, rive, the, your mother's driver who said you should not read your books, or that when you go to the exam, when you are sleeping, it was it had activated. You know, remember this fun, fun, funny story, real story of the, of the Olympian boxer Jeremiah Okorodudu when he met with uh, Joe Lassisi. Uh, <clears throat> he was by far more famous than all that. And those, I'm talking about maybe 25 years ago. Uh, he lost. Joe Lassisi beat him. And then Jeremiah Okorodudu said that when they got to the ring, I think this national stadium here, yeah, in fact, he started seeing seven Joe Lassisi. He says later, many years, when he became a Christian or something, born again, and I said, true, he had to save his face, that uh, probably it was the blue. <laughs> that if he saw seven gold assists, it was the blue that made him to shake his brain and reset his brain and all that. So if this gentleman now says that this high pop, it's like um, um, the expert in intelligence fellow said, he said he must be clutching at, at straws because it's not related. Is it that they are the one who now load, who push you into the car? When you are counting the money, it was the uh, iPod that supplied you the money. It was iPod, the <laughs> mules were iPod people who set you up. And indeed, how do you, like they used to say among the Yahoo people, if you are not greedy, you cannot be hooked. Mm. Well, finally, gentlemen, before I let you go, um, when Nigerians have their fingers crossed, we're all expecting to see the last of this. And it's, it's not our place to preempt the courts, but... Um, what would be your positive message to those of us who are, let me not include myself because I'm just, a, uh, you know, an observer, but the Nigerians who have lost hope, like you said, that have jettisoned hope in not just the judiciary, but of course the processes in this country. Yeah, you, what's, you, what's well, what, what I want to say is this, to? Um, it's our country. It's our country. Really, we've been messed up, up, down and all that. If you lose hope, you're gone. There are a lot of things to be hopeless about. But I will have taught us. He says, not life that matters, but the courage that you bring into it. So this country, like he said, when, uh, whether somebody is blind, whether you like Boa Mariwa or you don't like him, the truth is that when he has taken over now, we've seen an improved um, NDLA. NDLA. It was like the late Mrs. Dinavda Kuman 
When she took over, so the, 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 uh, when she's two stars, there is a lie, it's a flash in the pan. But she, no, after she's gone, we didn't hear Navdak again like that. So there are still good people. And um, before even this query that fell, busting this crime, busting that crime, although anybody with any, with any fear sense of introspection wonder there's something wrong with this cop. To, to, to publicity, he, he would go and do an operation, he would put it on paper, um, put, put it on social media, he would take picture, and we'd be wondering, what kind of cop is this? But the truth of the matter is this, you can't afford to drown in hopelessness. In fact, for people like us, you just have to fight and regain and reclaim your country. You can't, you can't, you can't just give up. And so as for this gentleman, uh, is by us showing interest in the matter that you even make all the actors to sit up. The lawyers, as I'm saying this, for that's my constituency. You want to take up, take up the matter. You know how we have been trained. Mm. You don't suppress facts in the name of I'm defending my clients. You guess you give in the very best of defense within the law. And then for the judges handling this matter, you don't compromise. And for the prosecutor, you know, many of the times, uh, prosecutors spoil case. If I can use that Nigerian language. So, when you, so people start blaming the judges, but if very poor uh, evidence, uncoordinated evidence is brought before a judge, what else, what else can they So all this, but when we, the owners of Nigeria, the people of Nigeria, at least the informed one, when we have cases like this and we continue to haul about it, we want justice to be done, not the one you begin to say, Abakiari is a Christian, Abakiari is from Boronu, so are what people are being uh, oppressed. Um, this is a wrong attitude. Okay. Uh, final word, uh, Mr. Macri. Yeah, well, um, I, I think uh, this particular case underlines the need for us to restructure the security agencies. You know, there is very, very strong need right now to look in the police, into the police, because we keep on talking about it and then allowing that structure to go on and the processes, you know, there are two things to look at there in the police now. The structure, either we want to dismantle it and call for state police or, you know, local government sheriffs or whatever, so that the police is nearer to the people where crime happens. Or we want to continue maintaining the unitary system that is going on. And then the processes, their procedures, how the police carries out its investigations, how they, how, you know, how do you train them? How do we eliminate corruption, even in the police? These are things that should, it is the time for us to sit back and look at it. Mm. Because if we don't, we'll keep on hearing more stories and more stories about this. Sad stories. Well, I want to say thank you to additional Ogunlana. He is a legal practitioner. Dennis Amakri is a former assistant director of the Department of State Services, DSS. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being here. Good evening, madam. We appreciate thank it. You. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, we discuss the upcoming Oshun State gubernatorial elections and the infighting issues within the APC. Stay with us.